Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Recently, the debate on trans athletes and whether or not they should be allowed to compete in the sports division aligning with their gender identity has kind of exploded. I remember people hating on Rachel McKinnon, the transgender world champion cyclist for, you know, competing in the women's division. But lately it's escalated to people hating on high school students and even trans women that never even competed against cisgender women. I want to make this video to break down all the misconceptions people have about trans athletes, specifically trans women. I also want to provide you with some resources and some studies about how hormone replacement therapy affects transgender women's physical advantages. And I also am going to give you my opinion on whether or not trans women should be able to compete alongside cisgender women in professional sports. I make new videos every single Thursday, so if you are new here, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. I'll wait for you. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Other than that, let's get right into this week's video. I want to start out this video by showing you guys some clips from various YouTube videos to really illustrate the concerns that people have about trans women in sports. You want like all this transgender parts. shit? You know who, you know, transgender athletes, you know who suffers? Women. That's who <laughs> suffers. It's always women. And when, you're, when you're trying to like make everything diverse, let's diversify and include everyone. No, you're not including everyone. You're including men to compete as women. That's what you're doing. Biological men and biological women are different that shouldn't be that shouldn't be a controversial statement in any sort of sane world it's something we're all implicitly and explicitly aware of males are stronger and faster than females are on average especially once you get to an elite level there's a very large performance difference even if i went on a hormonal treatment for one year i think to bring my testosterone down to a certain level i think you'd have to be either stupid or you know ideologically possessed to think that that would be remotely fair. There's an individual who's what, 270, maybe 300 pounds, competing against much smaller individuals. There's no doubt that testosterone makes you stronger, more aggressive. Mm -hmm. You go through a male puberty, you have bigger joints, you have bigger bones, and I just think it is grossly unfair. You are stealing people's dreams. I'm so sorry that you had to sit through that and like watch that, but it had to be done. You needed to understand. But now let's break down each of the arguments made so that we can go, you know, step by step and really break down everything that's being said here. One, it is unfair to cisgender women to have to compete alongside transgender women. More specifically, that you are stealing people's dreams by forcing them to compete against transgender women. The second part of the opposition's argument is that people that have gone through male puberty have bigger muscles, they have larger bone structure, larger bone frame, bone structure, that they are stronger in general and that they will always benefit from these advantages. And finally, the third part of the argument, they all kind of go together, they're all kind of hand in hand, you know, but I really wanted to like break it down for you guys. Um, the third part is that biological men and biological women are different. <laughs> so to start off with the first part of the argument that allowing trans women to compete against cisgender women would be unfair to those cisgender women. I actually agree with this statement to an extent. <laughs> People born male do have undeniable biological advantages over their cisgender counterparts. However, we need to look into what factors of being born male are actually giving these athletes these advantages. I believe fairness in sports is super important, especially at a competitive professional level. But the thing is, I really don't think that this is unfair most of the time. The majority of scientists believe that the main cause of the differences in athletic ability between sexes is testosterone. And when that testosterone is suppressed for an extended period of time, the biological qualities affecting athletic ability change. This was actually demonstrated in a study with a trans athlete named Jill Bearden. Bearden actually had her athletic abilities tested before and after her hormonal transition, and the results showed that her overall power had reduced by over 11%. Inside this sports lab, Jillian Bearden is being tested. She's part of a research study and is an ideal candidate because she was tested before she transitioned, so there's baseline data. Overall, her power is down by more than 11%. When we look at the fastest 200 meter cycling sprint, I think they call it, the men's time was, get this, 11.5% faster. After hormone therapy, Bearden's athletic ability when it came to cycling was reduced from the cis male range to the cis female range, meaning that her athletic ability was no different than her cisgender counterparts. To continue, the next part of the opposition's argument is that trans women will retain muscle mass and they will retain the skeletal structure that puberty gave them. 
Again, I actually agree with the notion that trans women will retain some of their advantage and athletic ability, such as their on average larger frame, as well as some of the muscle mass testosterone help them build. However, I think in most cases and in most sports, the disadvantages that trans women experience after going on HRT balance out the advantages that they experience to a point where a fair competition is totally possible. Joanna Harper, who is a medical physicist and advisor to the International Olympic Committee, as well as a transgender athlete herself, has done extensive research on the effect of hormone replacement therapy on athletic ability, specifically when it has to do with runners. Harper claims that some of the introduced disadvantages that trans women would experience after going on HRT are things such as decreased aerobic capacity as well as a decreased muscle mass. She says that these disadvantages as well as other disadvantages essentially make a trans woman perform like a big car with a small engine. I think that's like exactly the quote that she used. She compared them to a big car with a small engine. Hormone therapy that trans women undergo makes many changes in the biological qualities that are important for sport. Trans women have bigger frames, which are now being powered by reduced muscle mass and reduced aerobic capacity. So it's like a big car with a small engine right, competing right. against a small car with a small engine. Right, so trans like women have- Buick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, not a Tesla. Yeah, yeah not a Tesla. No. <laughs> not only does Harper's own run times decrease by 12% within the first nine months of her hormone replacement therapy, but she also did an extensive study with eight other transgender athletes as well. She compared their run times both before and after transitioned and used some sort of mathematical equation to compensate for aging and stuff like that. I'll link everything down in the description, obviously. So if you want to look into how she controlled for these certain things, you can do that. It's super, you know, scientific, super, you know, professional. So check that out. I don't know how to explain it as well as her, but you know. The results show that runners who performed comparatively to cisgender males before their transition performed comparatively to cisgender females after their transition. Again, by transition, I mean hormonal transition, not just like a social transition. This is, you know, introducing hormones, so. The study specifically showed that male to female runners experience an approximate 10% decrease in running speeds after going on HRT. Which again, when we look at the difference between men and women's world record race times, they are 9 to 9.1% different. They're even less than that 10% difference that she found. So yet again, yet another sport, the data shows that HRT does in fact bring trans women from a cis male athletic ability to a cis female athletic ability. Moving on to the last argument opposing trans women in sports, which is that men and women are biologically different and sports are segregated because of the differences between men and women or men are faster and stronger and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Can you guess what I'm gonna say? Again, I agree. Men and women are obviously biologically different and people who go through male puberty do have an undeniable advantage in sport. That is, unless they undergo hormonal transition. I do think it's a little bit ironic though that the opposition emphasizes the difference between cis men and cis women's athletic ability while also supporting the USA powerlifting's ban on all transgender men that are on testosterone. Yes, you heard me correctly, babe. Not only are all trans women banned from USA powerlifting, just like in general, just no trans women, period, but also all trans men who take testosterone are also banned. So you can compete as a trans man, you just have to go in like pre-testosterone, pre-T, all that kind of stuff. That's how you have to go in and compete against cisgender men. They state that since cis men aren't allowed to enhance their performance using testosterone, trans men aren't allowed to use testosterone either. Makes sense, right? No, it does not. Trans men that are going on T are aiming for the cisgender male testosterone level. Cisgender men taking performance enhancers are gonna be going way over the level that trans men's testosterone would be at. So to say that it's the same thing is just illogical. If the opposition is so passionate about there being such a huge difference between people born male and people born female, wouldn't they be in favor of trans men upping their testosterone level so that it's an evil playing field with other cisgender men? Like, you know, to keep everything fair and equal. I will admit, however, that power lifting is a little bit of a different situation just due to the fact that the differences in results or the differences in scores you could say is a lot bigger than in cycling or in running. That's due to the fact that as somebody with testosterone running through your body it's a lot easier to build a lot of muscle. While HRT does decrease muscle mass to an extent a lot of power lifters are not going to want to lose a lot of their muscle mass because it's you know, something that they work so hard for. The problem here is that people with testosterone can get up to 200 to 300 pounds of pure muscle. And for people without that level of testosterone, like cisgender women, it's a lot harder and even sometimes impossible for them to get that much muscle on their body. When we look at weight classes for powerlifting, the heaviest weight class for men is 308 plus pounds, I believe. And for women, the heaviest category 
category is 198 plus pounds. If you have a trans woman who has 300 pounds of muscle competing against somebody that is, you know, 200 pounds of muscle even, it's not gonna be a fair competition. It's just not. However, if that trans woman was instead 200 pounds of muscle and that cisgender girl was also 200 pounds of muscle, I would argue that after hormone replacement therapy, a fair competition could be possible. There is, however, the concern of whether or not it's fair that trans women were able to build up so much muscle before transitioning and keeping so much of that muscle mass that is, you know, like I said, a lot harder for cisgender women to build. Even if a cisgender woman worked really, really hard, built up muscle, you still have to think about whether or not that is fair to that cisgender woman because she obviously had to work a lot harder to get that much muscle on her body. Does that make sense? So th there's still like a very sticky situation. There's still like a very complex discussion to be had. And I think it does vary a lot between sport. In sports such as running and cycling, there is evidence that shows that after 12 months of hormone replacement therapy, trans women will not have much of an athletic advantage at all. Like I mentioned, there is always the concern of weight class discrepancies creating some unfair competition. And there is some validity to that concern. And because of that, I think that trans women and people in general should only compete in sports where they meet the you know physical requirements such as being above or below a certain weight or above or below a certain height all that kind of stuff all right you guys that is it for this week's video thank you guys so much for watching i hope that i you know gave you a different perspective maybe i know that there's a lot of negativity around trans women in sports but it shouldn't be as much of a problem as people make it out to be i am going to be linking a lot of different articles and you know studies down below so please take a look at that before you comment any like mean transphobic stuff if you did like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up down below. It really helps out my channel a lot. So thank you. Subscribe if you are not already and you would like to be. And yeah, that's it. Other than that, I think I'm going to go. So thank you guys so much for watching again. And I will see you in next week's video. Bye guys.